a day. What are we doing? Um, let's see. Oh, the stuck. Oh, no. Oh, there we go. Hopefully you do not get too messed up. Okay, so we're working on this sort of concave bit right here. You can sort of see. Maybe the light is not good. Oh, the light is good. Here. This one here. Um, and you can tell it's like pretty narrow, so I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how to get this to work. So we shall see. And we shall listen to... What shall we listen to? Intersection! Uh, Intersection is from the New Republic. It's a podcast that I love. It's by Jamil Smith and... It's about intersectionality, and it's pretty cool. So, I'm gonna finish listening to It's a Good Time to Be a Black Thinker. I'm talking about the, the, the very forum itself presents to us opportunities to winnow and, and, and sift through the stuff that's good and bad. Just because you got a forum don't mean you should have one. And just because you on Twitter don't mean you say nothing. And you can be dumb and stupid and be unknown. And you can be dumb and stupid and be famous. Or you can be smart with a small audience or smart with a big audience. You still got to do the work. The beautiful thing about social media is that it allows the kind of immediate feedback. And you can go back and you can rethink your thoughts or somebody who you never knew was reading your stuff now weighs in and gives you some helpful commentaries. But it doesn't remove the necessity of going back alone off of Twitter, off of Facebook, off of social media to dig deep and to wrestle profoundly with the ideas that come forward. And at the same time, as Jamila uh, alluded to uh, the comment about cute phrases, it takes a lot of work to do a cute phrase that's real. It takes a lot of work to do a deft turn of phrase. Deft turns of phrases are the overflow of critical erudition over space and time that allow you to condense into pithy formula uh, what is an essentially a profound idea. Jesse Jackson once said something. He said, if you say something I can't understand, that's a failure of your education, not mine. By which he meant it takes a lot of work to translate this stuff into a fashion and a form that allows the ideas and merits of your argument to sing in eloquent prose uh, in a way that people who are intelligent can comprehend. So I'm, I'm still invested in that, and the book is still critical for that kind of uh, reality. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll talk about one of the biggest critics of your essay, Michael. And I want to hear how all of you respond. But first, I have this message from the folks paying the bills. This episode is brought to you by the Bevel Sound that Bevel had just released. You're there. Why not sign up for the Bevel shaving system that I've seen? Mike, you cite the academic Eddie Glaude in your piece. He's the chair of African American Studies at Princeton, one of your alma maters. His 2013 op-ed in the New York Times, which I want to read a piece of right here, quote, all too often what stands in for the black intellectual these days are folks who can spin a phrase and offer a soundbite. The idea of the intellectual has been supplanted by the fast-talking black PhD pundit who strives to be on CNN, Fox, or MSNBC. This same pundit has found new career opportunities within universities and colleges by thinking about black people in ways that conform to the current liberal consensus about racial matters. Now, Professor Glaude has some criticism on Twitter of the essay. We're going to put a store by of your conversation with him on, on our website with this podcast. But, Mike, how would you characterize his Oh, come on. Stand people? up. Well, look, Eddie Glaude's a real smart guy. And uh, I always take seriously what he says, regardless of what some might ascribe his motives to be, whatever source they might ascribe his motives to. It's smart stuff, and it's worthy of, uh, of taking critically, which is why I took my time. I don't often respond to people on Twitter, I mean, to, to that extent. And look, I, you, you heard by my previous comment what I think about long work. That's why I got 17 books. That's why I've got sermons, essays, uh, interviews. That's why I'm ravenous about the particular fora and the multiple means by which people can articulate ideas and engage them. I'm hungry, avaricious even, for 